So I'm really excited because we are about to bring our old show, The Berg, back to life. making new episodes but we are re-releasing the episodes that we made all the way back in 2006 before the berg there was no such thing as a web series and i'm not even being facetious it did not exist i mean the year was 2006 youtube was only about a year old and it had like a cap on it of how long you could run something i think it was five minutes um it was not owned by google yet and what most people were putting on there, if anything, was like just micro vlog stuff or like dogs on skateboards or like things like that. Uh, I think the first video was a trip to the zoo or something. So it was really, no one knew what to do with YouTube yet. You know, Facebook was, was existent, but it was only open to colleges. MySpace, that was the shit. Friendster had already come and kind of gone, but MySpace was on the rise and everyone loved MySpace, which is kind of funny to think about now. But that was it for social networks. Like none of the others, Instagram, TikTok, nothing else existed. Twitter didn't exist. It was a very different world. It was post 9-11, but like kind of recently post 9-11. Um, not a, there was no iPhones even. And in this context, we made this show, right? Kathleen Grace, who is a director I knew, she had an idea to do a show about hipsters. Yeah, this was the like high water mark of the hipster era, like the original one, like the strokes and all of that stuff. Um, you know, the white stripes, all of that music, the yeah, yeah, yeahs. That was all happening. I was in a band at the time that kind of like was in that same world in Brooklyn and we played all these art house shows and bar shows in, in Williamsburg. And so I was in that scene um, and uh, knew some of the people and so did Kathleen. But we didn't really know what we wanted to do. I mean, our first thought was, what if we just take the cameras that we had, which are, you know, this being 2006, these are like mini DV cameras. These are clunky, clunky things. But what if we take these cameras and just get together great actors that we have access to? I was the writer, Kathleen was a producer. Um, but what if we kind of put this stuff together, make like a cool package, try to sell it to TV? We had never done anything like that before either one of us. I brought on Matt Yeager, who I had gone to college with and had a good time in playwriting class to um, <laughs> to help me write this. We had never written together, but we thought it'd be worthwhile to do. Um, we also brought in a writer named Brenda Withers, who had been the writing partner of Mindy Kaling, who we also knew was kind of in the circle. Um, and we developed these characters. And um, we wrote some scripts. We kind of came up with five central characters Courtney, who is our like vapid, um, sort of fashion obsessed uh, wannabe actor. Xander, who is equally vapid, like he imagines himself an artistic documentary filmmaker. Of course, he's living off a trust fund. Jed, who's like the music guy who is really cynical, like the cynical, jaded hipster that you see everywhere. And Spring, who is like our communist, uh, environmental activist, what would today be called a social justice warrior. And then Ryan, who is our bro, who was representative of sort of like the non-hipster transplants that we were starting to see like move in to this, into the neighborhood, but also kind of just like the voice of the everyman, the person who wasn't a hipster, because we needed a character like that. Um, these were our characters. We liked where they were going. And we had so much fun kind of writing the first four episodes um, and filmed them. Um, all of the titles of all of the Berg episodes um, meant at least two, usually three things. So, you know, in the episode MySpace, on one hand, one of the plot lines has to do with MySpace, the social network. Another one has to do with Ryan moving into the apartment and Jed kind of getting territorial. This is my space. And then another plot line has Xander um, doing some weird eye thing where he's invading people's personal space. Similarly, like cred was all about um, credit cards, but also like social cred, things like this. And so every episode of The Berg has at least one or two or three different meanings how it's named. Got filming, filmed the first four episodes, had such a blast, realized that like we had something like with this cast and like the crew of people that we assembled who were all again just doing this for free and for the love of it um we realized we had something and we just kept filming 
And then we decided, well, since we're filming anyway and we're making all these episodes, let's just put them out. Let's see what happens. And there was no where to put them except for on our own website. So we did that. We created theberg.tv. You know, we, we made some smart decisions about, like, who we spread the word to. Why don't we use local bands to score each episode? Um, local bands, local performance artists, things like this. And so we did. Um, and the very first band, it so happened, was this band, this awesome, awesome band, Bravo Silva. Um, their lead singer was actually Meryl Streep's son. We didn't know this at the time. Um, and But they were great. It's a great band. Their music was great. It set the tone perfectly. And it also, we didn't know this, but their manager happened to be also a writer for Gothamist, which was like a big vlog at the time. And so she wrote about the project. So we launched our project Sunday night, had a party, and then I think by Thursday we were in the New York Times. Like it happened that quickly. And then people started watching and picking up and picking up. This was the first of its kind. It's really important to say that. Like, um, not that it's about cred <laughs> or getting recognition, but no, you know, fuck it. No, I do, I do want recognition for this. I, I do want myself and Kathleen and Anna, our editor, and Matt, and all of our cast and our crew, I want Johnny, I want everyone to get the recognition for creating the very first web series. Because here's the thing, I've, I've heard, you know, clips before of like Lena Dunham mentioning that she liked The Berg, you know, I've run into people at film festivals who said like The Berg was actually like a major influence to start, you know, making indie stuff. But these shows that came after, which were like this like kind of like Brooklyn aesthetic, girls, Broad City, High Maintenance, you know, they all started as web series and then went to television. And I hope I'm not like tooting our horn too much when I say that they came into existence only after the Berg showed people that yes, you could actually just make a funny show and put it on the internet and it would find an audience. We didn't make it onto television. And there's a couple reasons we didn't make it onto television, and, and maybe I'll talk about that in another, another post. So, the original Berg episodes, the quality isn't great. Like, I mean, the production quality isn't great. The sound in some places is atrocious, um, because we weren't, we, you know, we had a crew of a couple people, um, and we didn't have any money to, like, lock down sets. We'd have to steal shots, you know, um, and... It was more important to us to get out something fast and cheap and good uh, than it was for it to have perfect broadcast quality standards. We could have made the Berg into a bigger thing. And I think to do so, we would have had to have sold the idea. Michael Eisner, the old you know, um, president of Disney, uh, at the end of, you know, in 2007, and approached us and said, I love this show so much. We thought he was kidding. He, but he, nope, he had seen every episode. He had taken copious notes on each one. Um, the man did his homework. He loved it. He wanted to buy it. Uh, we said no. And the reason we said no is because we were still making it. We wanted to keep owning our baby. And I don't necessarily think that was the wrong choice. We made a different show with him. Um, and that was a great experience too. But I think that had we sold the Berg to television, it could have been a hit along the lines of Broad City. That's what should have happened. Like, that's what should have happened. Arrested Development. It, was, it would have been like we were frequently compared to Arrested Development. You know, the upside is it got us the start of our careers. It got us agents and managers. Um, and, you know, it had an audience. It built its audience. Unfortunately, now, the Berg doesn't exist online in the way it used to. Like I said, we never really distributed through YouTube. We were distributed by a company called Blip.tv, and we had thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of views through blip.tv um, across all these different channels. And blip went away, and when they went away, so did our distribution, and eventually our site. Um, so the berg.tv does not exist anymore. You cannot see a lot of the episodes. You know, we also don't have what was online, like a very vibrant community of people commenting and posting on all of these things and uh, talking about hipsters yes we benefited from being the first you know and then like a bunch of people came in after us and like hipster olympics and like the slope and you know the bedford stop and all these things and made the same like brooklyn jokes that we did and and or made different ones and made better ones and you know the old saying is that 
settlers get rich while pioneers get slaughtered. And again, I hope I don't sound like I'm bragging about this. I kind of am bragging about being the first one there, but it's not like we benefited from that as much as the people who came after us. Um, which, you know, starts to raise questions about like, yeah, like what is the more valuable skill to have in Hollywood? Is it to come up with the idea and do it first? Or is it to be the person who recognizes where the gold is and then swoops in and gets it? I think it might be the second. Now that said, a lot of the people involved in the Berg did succeed in Hollywood. Uh, Kelly Giddish, who was on the show as Courtney, I mean, she was on All My Children when we cast her, but, you know, then went on to lead a number of shows uh, and then eventually, of course, enjoyed like a decade on Law and Order um, in a very, very public way. Lindsay Broad went to go be on The Office for a season, which was fantastic. Jeff Skyron, who plays Ryan, um, is a very successful theater actor who's been on Broadway a number of times. Um, you know, Bob McClure, who plays Jed, got out of acting but launched his own company called McClure's Pickles. So if you ever shopped for McClure's Pickle, that you're buying Jed's Pickles. Um, in addition, other people that we had on the show, um, Mike still ran Upright Citizens LA and, and Terry Withers did a bunch of the, the stuff in New York. Um, Baron Vaughn was in an episode and he is one of the voices of Mystery Science Theater 3000. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Brie Larson herself is in an episode. Sadly, I didn't even get to meet her. It was an episode shot on a day I wasn't there, but um, she's in it, you know, <laughs> briefly, um, which is very, very, very cool. So what we're doing now is we're putting the Berg together again. Some of these episodes hold up really well and are still funny. Some are not. We're going to put them out anyway. We're going to put them out on Tubi um, because we have a distribution deal there. And this is going to be the first project of maybe many where we kind of put together these, these shows and repackage them and send them all out and hopefully see if they find a new audience. Because, you know, one thing for sure is like this late 90s aughts um, you know, pre-iPhone aesthetic is big right now. And the Berg is all about that. And the Berg is like, it's due for a revisitation and a renaissance. And 2024 is going to be the year that we do that. So keep looking out for that. Um, we're going to be announcing a couple like live streams and we're going to be announcing when these projects are available on Tubi. And I'll start posting more of the Berg stuff here. So I'm psyched to bring one of my all-time favorite loved projects back to life. Um, I mean, I'm psyched for it to find a new audience. In the meantime, like, subscribe to Unprecious Studios, which is the name of our little company shingle here dedicated to micro-budget filmmaking.